Hi, everyone. Thanks for joining my presentation about testing and delivery of the base container images, or as I like to call it nowadays, welcome to automation hell, because automation is always nice as long as it works. Who am I? My name is Dan Schermark. I became the de facto release engineer of SLE BCI. Besides that, I also do things in Fedora, other open source projects, break my home automation system from time to time because I like to stand in my bathroom without any lights. And if after this you should be feel inclined to follow me on social media, you can do so. I might post stuff or not. Probably a link to this talk. But first, let's go to the commercial section. And that's what is SLE BCI, in case you have never heard of that. That's short for uh, SUSE Linux Enterprise Based Container Images. Very short name for essentially just a set of, uh, of containers that are based on SUSE Linux Enterprise Server. These are permissively licensed. It's all fully open source. They are free to use and distribute according to the EULA. Read it. I'm not a lawyer, so I can't comment whether how that exactly applies to you. They are available for the four big architectures, so for x86-64, ARCH-64, PowerPC, and S390X. And it's essentially comparable to Red Hat's UBI, so you, have a, uh, you can get them just on registry.suse.com. And we have three flavors in total. So we have base images. There we have a, the creatively called base image. So the naming could have been from me. But actually, this was not my invention. Uh, then we have a micro image, a minimal image, a busy box image. That one's relatively tiny for not being based on Alpine. We have language stack images, which, bundles, uh, which include stuff like Go, Java, Python. .NET, uh, Rust, and a bunch of others that I forgot about. And then we have also application containers like RMT, Postgres, the Docker registry. And you can find all that on registry.suse.com or also on the build service. Good. Commercial section end. Now we come to condense two years into 20 minutes. Let's start. So we are back in 2021, roughly, uh, when, when this whole idea came about. And so, so people started building containers, and we threw them just onto, uh, onto the internal build service. And then we had, back then, I think we started with an OpenJDK and a Python container. And we already had the SLE base image. And someone created a .NET container. And we just threw that in there. We did some QA, more or less. So we tested that the thing starts once. Um, and that kind of worked, kind of, for a while. Um, it all got, uh, we integrated it into, the all, uh, into all the internal processes and got, uh, got some of that pushed to the registry. But then, usual, as usual with manual processes, People forget about them. Well, and then the .NET images got out of date. So the problem here was because we didn't actually build .NET ourselves, we grabbed the .NET RPMs from, from Microsoft because building .NET is hell, and we, don't want, we already have automation hell. Well, back then we didn't, but we had other hells. So we just grabbed the .NET, uh, the .NET RPMs and no one updated them. So let's automate things. First thing that we, uh, we did with this one was just a simple GitLab CI pipeline that ran on our internal GitLab instance. Uh, what it would do is just fetch the, uh, fetch the newest RPMs from packages.microsoft.com, render a Docker file, download everything, commit into the build service, and order submit. That's when people started hating me because I started creating submit requests every, uh, every second day and uh, didn't supersede the old ones, so the review team wasn't happy about that. But again, automation hell, but it's solvable. So 
that was that was okay -ish. that worked but then as usual with projects they start to grow so we got more images we got Node.js, we already had Java, we got Python, we got more .NET versions, we got more base images, we got application containers, and so on. So you get more and more and more images and more and more stuff to take care of manually, which is always not fun. Then we got another fun thing, and that's the second SLE service pack that you have to take care of parallel, because some images were based on the new service pack, some on the old service pack. Then we had to transition, which is, I could tell, I could probably talk about transitioning the images for another hour because then you get into fun stuff like how OBS actually um, parses versions of containers, which is surprising in a few places. We got more formal requirements, i.e. how should the labels be, and so on and so on. Uh, oh yeah, and shouldn't we be testing them? So the testing was initially very sketchy, so we tested them once, and then maybe a few times again, and then not really. So back then I got tasked with Jean-Philippe Evan to create tests for this. Uh, we wrote an initial, initial BCI test suit that more or less still exists but in a, in, it evolved quite a lot. That thing, so I, I, most of the credit here deserves JP. Um, it was back then PyTest, Test Infra, and a lot, a lot, and lots and lots of magic. So it was very obscure how things would actually run, but it was, very, it was uh, in one sense pretty fancy because you could, uh, it would automatically um, run tests for a certain flavor of containers, check all, uh, check all the things, and you didn't have to declare everything yourself. But it ran just on GitHub. And it was not, it was not in the pros, uh, it was not uh, really in the SLE release process, which is a problem because things break on GitHub and you get a notification and you, hmm, well, I'll do that later. And it doesn't block a release. So you might as just as well not do it. But fortunately, things, uh, things improved here. So we. Uh, Roughly a year later, we split out the core of the uh, of the testing library into pytest underscore container. So the creative name that's that's my part, that's my big contribution to this. Uh, there's actually a few other projects that I bullied into using it. So if you want to test anything in containers or test containers, I think it's a great library, but I might be biased because I wrote it. Uh, and now we also started testing things in OpenQA on all the big, uh, on all four architectures, on all the platforms, and also in a few public clouds. So testing got testing got better. Um, so I'm sorry, there should have been somewhere else. Ah, I'm missing this slide. Um, so a, f a few words about the testing itself. We, uh, that's also what we are running nowadays. It's essentially a set of common tests uh, for, for that we run for every container. So basic things like, does it launch? Because occasionally you rely on the entry point being somewhere, then the package, underlying packaging changes, and your binary moves, and suddenly your container won't start because your entry point is somewhere else or for some reason you can't install packages in there anymore. Uh, or one test that I'm not entirely happy about is the image size. We all like small images, but sometimes packages just grow, and then your test starts failing because your image is now 42 megabytes instead of 41. So what you're going to do about it? If you have an idea, please tell me, because usually it's like, okay, Increase the, in, increase the minimal limit. That's, so, that's in what we have done in 99% of the cases. And then we also have a bunch of tests for each, uh, for each image. So for most of the language stacks, we just grab a, few, uh, grab a few popular repositories, try to build them, and uh, see if that still works. 
Okay, uh, we had that part. So how does the whole kerfuffle look like? So we had um, we had a cron job on uh, on GitLab. We have some uh, um, that updates our .NET images. We push everything to the build service. That gets rebuilt. It gets tested. It, put, it gets shoved into the BCI release pi uh, into the whole really release pipeline, and then it gets pushed by QA to the uh, to the SUSE registry. All fine, but um, shouldn't this thing be open source? So from from the get go, we we said BCI is a set of open source uh, open source container images, and uh, currently, so you can see, okay, GitLab.suse.de. You can punch this into your browser; it won't resolve. This one won't resolve. This one also not, unless you're in the SUSE RND VPN. So the open sourceness is more of a technicality. So well, let's move the thing public. First step that we did was let's create a project on OBS, point all the automation that's in there in place to OBS, create a bot that just submits everything from OBS to IBS and keep the rest. So in theory, you could contribute. And it's, already, it's in a public place. And so that was, uh, that was the first step. But are we, are we there yet? Um, yeah, I mean, the templates are public on OBS, but it's not really all, all the automation that creates things. So, for instance, the .NET updater, and uh, I must apologize, I have lost somewhere another slide. So uh, let's backtrack uh, just a second. So another thing that we also uh, that we also added, uh, threw into the mix uh, is a is a Docker file or a Kiwi template generator, because we got at some point so many images and quite a few requirements how they should how they should look like how they should be built um, it grew out of uh, it, it became very inconvenient to apply all of that manually so we just created a, sh a short python script that would use a bunch of jinja and render out docker files and then eventually also kiwi templates uh, that again because i named it was creatively called the bci docker file generator um, and that one also that one was to be applied manually, which, as you can, as I've already told, applying things manually is usually you forget, and then things get out of sync. Uh, and that was one of the problems. So sometimes the templates wouldn't get applied, and then we realized, oh look, this uh, this image is still using the old templates and not the new ones. It only gets applied from time to time. You have to do it manually, so you forget. So it should be it should be automated, and you could still do manual changes, which sometimes happened because people wouldn't read the documentation or just would commit directly and break things, and then you would apply the templates and overwrite the changes, and they'd get mad, and you'd get mad, and all kinds of problems would pop up. The .NET images were also created completely separately. Um, but then the new OBS SCM sync feature came to the rescue. So in case you haven't heard of that, uh, you can now pull in uh, you can now pull in packages or whole projects on OBS directly from Git. And so we thought, well, that sounds like a convenient thing. So how about we just move all the sources to GitHub and make this Docker file generator the single source of truth? So it, it would generate the Docker files, it would hold the sources that would get linked to OBS, and we have everything in Git, and then the build service is just doing the building part and not also the source control. So that's exactly what we did. We have a main branch that contains, uh, that really contains all the code for the template generation for every single image that we have. And then we have 
what I call creatively deployment branches, where we just rent out the template in there and also write in the fancy .changes files, which you all like. Um, so how this looks like, uh, let's say you want, to, you want to fix a bug or you want to change anything in the images. So you, uh, you just go to GitHub, you create, a, uh, you create a new branch, you create a pull request, and uh, then, then a bot will render out all the templates into, uh, into new branches for each service pack and for Tumbleweed. Um, it will give them a random name. Wrong key, sorry. Uh, and it will automatically create, uh, create test projects on the build service to just check, do all these images still build? And then it will just report back once all the builds have finished, provided that they finished in six hours, because that's the maximum time that, um, that GitHub actions can run. And in case S390 is once again blocked, that can take 12 hours and then the job fails. So that's one of the downsides, among many others. And then finally, the bot will just comment and tell you, yeah, you have a, you got a staging project with a link in this branch, that's the comment, and hopefully the build succeeded. Most of the time that actually happens. And then uh, it, once, you, once you have merged your pull request, Essentially the same thing, or something like the same thing happens again. So we, uh, we then dump out the templates into, uh, into an actual branch that should then be merged into the branches that contain the sources. Then, you get, then we use the OBS SCMCI integration, which is something, uh, something different than the SCM sync. Um, that's, essentially, uh, that's essentially the new OBS feature to just use it for build um, to test packages directly from Git. That does all the project creation, uh, project creation for us. We get, a report, uh, we get a report back. If that's merged, then we just trigger service runs on OBS in Devil BCI. That's where all our templates are. And um, so they get deployed. So are, are we there now? This is, this is now the whole setup, how it looks like. And it, that's more or less how it looks like currently. So we have, we have GitHub, where all of this magic that I, previ that I just described happens. We have our sources that are directly linked via, the, via SCM sync. And that happens there on dev, in the sub-projects of Devil BCI. Then we auto submit all of that to our internal build service, where we have two or three uh, test projects for for QA. Um, QA tests uh, tests all of that using BCI tests on openqa.suse.org, and that then gets released to registry.suse.com. So as usual, there's always things left to do. First and foremost, ensure that the automation actually doesn't break, which is harder to do than, well, than I initially thought. Um, but at least one thing that I'd really, really like to do is uh, if, you, if you change the templates, currently we just try to build things. But just because things are building doesn't mean they're working. So it would be nice, we have already this test suit, it would be nice to, also, to actually run it on pull requests. Because if we go back to this picture, when do you notice that things are broken? Here. When do you want things to notice when they're broken? When you're here. So it would be nice to add another arrow into this, which adds, of course, another possibility for a lot more breakage. Uh, we also have Tumbleweed BCIs. I guess you all didn't notice because we didn't make a lot of noise about them, and um, we also they deserve much more love than they actually got. Um, and one of the problems is also that the test suit doesn't support them, so their state is um, I don't know. I haven't tried them a lot, 
and I haven't tested them a lot, which is a shame, but there's only so much time that you have. So it would be nice to also add support for that, maybe build BCI on ELP. Depends on how ELP will actually turn out. And with that, um, I would... Uh, I won't try to read out every single name on this list, but that's hopefully everyone that was sort of kind of involved in this, uh, in this whole project and deserves thanks, and I don't want to butcher every name on this list. So thanks to all the people that contributed to this project, to the QE team, to the engineering team, and to many, many more. In case you want to actually look at the source, um, but please do so after the conference because I don't want to get things thrown at me for the code quality. Uh, you can find the Docker file generator here under SUSE slash Docker file generator, the test suit. Uh, this, is, this is the testing library PyTest container. Uh, if you want a, a short, uh, to see a short demo or presentation of it, uh, that's also on GitHub. The OBS projects are a Devil BCI, and you can find this presentation also directly on GitHub. And with that, I'd like to thank you for your attention, and if there are any questions, I'd be more than happy to answer them. In the afternoon, the presentation about using micro OS desktop, among other things, so that's advertising. But um, one thing I have noticed is that if we want to have container based uh, operating system, or if it should be foundation of everything eventually, uh, it's horrible difficult to find uh, containers which you, you want to use. You go to the Docker Hub and you have lovely 100,000 containers with most of them with uh, similar names. Uh, you can go to registry uh, opensuse.org. It's slightly better. It's not 100,000, but it's not, not less confusing. If, and, and so on and so on. Um, I think I'm... I'm ranting, and it's not about testing of BCI images, but uh, I, I think one thing which we really need to somehow uh, improve is some kind of user interface, how to discover the container which you need uh, to, and to have uh, like a set of well-documented, well-maintained uh, containers, which I hope the BCI containers uh, are supposed to be, but I'm not uh, actually sure whether well, they are it based on Slash, so I mean, you contribute to Slash yourself, so you you should know how well maintained Slash is, which I would say yes. So it definitely, so they they are well maintained, but uh, discoverability. Go to registry.suza.com. It has a web interface. You can find things there. I mean, we don't have a ton of container images there because just we are not that many people at SUSE that so we can't compete with Docker Hub. Um, but yeah, I mean, you can always improve discoverability. You can also always improve documentation. But I only got two hands and 24 hours in the day, so. Yeah, I kind of just want to answer your question to some extent. I, I think... Uh, in most cases, containers are not meant to be used like that. You download a single container. Um, usually, you need a set of containers, and then when you go all in and have Kubernetes running, for example, you can really pick an application from the Rancher App Store, and there's an easy way of finding the good ones and uh, you know, parameterize stuff very easily. Um, I think that's, that's how, ultimately, if you are all in with using containers for your infrastructure, things should, should look like. Um, and it's probably the wrong way to say, OK, I want to run just Engine X, so I look for the best Engine X container. 
uh, and, and pick it directly from, uh, from, from a registry. So I have a question based on that one slide that you had that was somewhat filled out of you getting, getting people to use your project. What are the other things that are using the hmm? stuff that you made, the PyTest container and things like that? You had a chart uh, with distributions and whatever. So um, back. Wait, this one? Yes. Who's doing it? What are they doing? Tell me. Hmm? Uh, this is just the test matrix. So this is really just where we uh, on. So this is the architectures where we run our tests, and these are the distributions where we run it. So, so you mentioned though you got other people to adopt your PyTest container thing. So who are they? Mm -hmm. Oh, you mean PyTest container? Yeah. Um, so we got Kiwi. Um, then the OBS SCM bridge is using it. The um, the node modules, bundlings, OBS service is using it. Mm -hmm. The uh, uh, OBS service replace using package version is using it. What? <laughs> I didn't. Uh, also, you might think that I invented that name. I actually didn't. Uh, no, that, that service is also using, uh, using PyTest container. And I think I bullied another service into using it as well, but I forgot. Oh, OK. Neat. Okay, then thanks a lot for attending and have a nice rest of the conference. <laughs>